Hi, I'm Chris Compton, Jr. with Workforce Concepts. Welcome to Hartford County Business Talks with Jesse Cunningham. Ready? Yes, sir. All right. Chris Compton, Jr., thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. So uh, Workforce Concepts, we are a voluntary benefits brokerage firm. Uh, So essentially what that means is we uh, represent the market for products that help to cover gaps left by healthcare. Okay, you're the owner. Yes. Workforce Mm -hmm. Concepts. Mm -hmm. So how long has the company been in existence? So the company started uh, August 13th, 2012. I can still remember getting the tax ID. Jeez, really? I just had to type in my companies, and I'm like, when did I start this Right? (laughs) Well, you remember, okay. August 13th, 2012, got the tax ID at the White Marsh Library. But I've been in the business since 2000, yeah, 2001. 2001. So, Mm -hmm. so... Group benefits, right? Mm-hmm. That's the focus. Mm-hmm. So, so tell us about that. Sure. So, uh, there's three different silos where we um, work and generate business. So, we have a marketing firm that sets appointments for us solely on uh, worksite benefits. So, um, we don't uh, do or offer healthcare or health insurance. Um, God bless the people that do, because it's like their job changes if not monthly, it's like weekly. Um, oh, so you don't do the healthcare. No. Because that's through the exchange and group plans. Yeah, or group brokers that focus on that. We specialize and focus more on uh, the individual benefit communication process. So we do partner with health brokers, um, and we provide an analysis similar to what they do, Jesse, where they look at um, Cigna, Care First, Aetna, United. We look at Transamerica, Guardian, Cigna, Aflac, Colonial to see what the best fit is. Mm. And it becomes a much more difficult path to navigate simply because there's no one-stop shop anymore. So if a company has Allstate, for instance, um, and they have that for you know accident, critical illness, uh, hospital maternity plans, things like that, we can take that invoice and say, you know, have you ever thought about shopping it? And they're so used to shopping everything else. Right, yeah. Why wouldn't they shop that just to see if they could save their employees money and get equal, if not greater, coverage? Uh, Interesting. So me and you are similar. We're both kind of independent insurance brokers. Correct. Just different products. Mm -hmm. So you are focusing on the employees um, with like tertiary or secondary benefits. Mm -hmm. Correct. So like, what are those specific products? Sure. So oftentimes in the market, it's referred to as worksite benefits, uh, enhanced benefits, voluntary benefits. Um, So those are your products uh, like accident plans. So for example, um, I'll give you my example. So I have an accident plan. It was tax day 2013 and I was on 695 going westbound Mm -hmm. and a car broke abruptly in front of me. I jerked the wheel to miss him. I hit the jersey wall. When I hit the wall, I overcompensated, threw it uh, the wheel back and ended up on the opposite shoulder. Now I went no kidding. Monday morning rush hour and I was actually, the part I left out, I was on my way to the doctors. Great. That's what you get for taking care of your health. <laughs> um, so I hit the wall, it was like NASCAR, I, I'm assuming, hit the wall and ended up on the shoulder and I've always obviously been a big believer in God but how I went Monday morning rush hour, I hit the wall to shoulder and I didn't hit anybody. Um, on 695. On 695 in the morning, back when we had rush hour and people were, right. you know, <laughs> we're not in the times we are now. Yeah. Um, so the ambulance driver pulled up. He said, are you okay? So this was roughly almost 10 years ago. And I tried to be tough guy. I said, yeah, I'm fine. And I went to move just like that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that hurts. I'll go with you. You're driving? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're I'll driving. get in your ambulance. We'll, we'll go to the hospital. So I paid for things like physical therapy um, that I had to get done. They paid for the ER visit. Uh, so it's a paycheck directly to me, and then I allocate it to whatever I see fit. So, so cash. Correct. Um, and, and what's a, that kind of plan called? Uh, an accident policy. Yeah, so that covers you for any kind of accident. It could be as minor as a bee sting, um, as major as a car accident. A better example um, that I have, so in almost 20 years in the business, the largest claim I've paid was on my daughter. So my daughter, Kaylee, uh, was born September 15th of 2007. She was 10 weeks early. So she was three pounds, eight ounces. She was literally from my wrist to my elbow big. And um, she was in there until the day before Halloween. So from September 15th to the day before Halloween, we had great health insurance and that covered a great deal of exposure that we had, but we still had deductibles, we still had co-payments. I have disability, but my disability didn't pay me right. anything because I'm not perfectly the healthy. Right. right. So the check that we had um, for maternity paid us thousands of dollars because it paid per day that Kaylee was in there. So that helped to cover a lot of you know diapers, um, 
you know, stay at home things and, and it's things you don't think of. It's driving back and forth to the hospital. It's the food you pick up. It's the time you spent there. Um, FMLA, Family Medical Leave Act, will keep your job, but it's not going to pay you anything. Right. So that helped in that instance. And that's what the so programs are designed in, to do. They give you cash, and you mm-hmm. can use for whatever you want. Correct. Because some policies, you know, if it's long-term care, say a singular long-term care policy, some are reimbursement models where you have to prove it's for this, it's right. for that. Right. So these policies are either indemnity-based or lump sum. So if they're indemnity-based, um, it's essentially cause and effect. So if I go to the emergency room, it's going to pay me X. If I need follow-up visits, it's going to pay me Y. Lump sum benefits, like take, for instance, a critical illness policy, if I'm diagnosed with a heart attack, it's gonna pay out $10,000. If two years later I get diagnosed with cancer, it pays out another $10,000. Mm. So it covers those catastrophic things that, yes, your health insurance covers, but you could have the best health insurance on the planet, you're still gonna have deductibles, co-payments, things like that, um, and the situations I mentioned as well uh, for that. Um, so in that instance, uh, another story I have, all personal stories, my dad um, had a heart attack, this is probably, six or seven years ago, um, and I bought him a critical illness policy, and I get a text message from my mom on a Saturday that said, don't worry, <laughs> your dad had a heart attack. Yeah. We're okay, um, just give us a call when you wake up. So I look at the text message, and I'm like, oh, don't worry, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I call my mom, um, and they were on vacation, he had just retired, and I said, uh, how's dad doing? Um, and I told my mother, I said, you know, I bought him a critical illness policy. Now, again, my mom has disability. Her disability is not going to pay her anything because no, yeah. she's perfectly healthy. So my mom's exact response to me was, oh, dad's going to get money for this? Tell him that. It'll make him feel better. <laughs> so I was like, that's unbelievable. <laughs> um, so my dad, God bless him, he's been a meat cutter for 38 years for Giant. Good for him. Um, blue collars, the day is long. Awesome. Love my father to death. So I get on the phone with him. I'm talking to him. And he said, oh, your mom mentioned you had a policy for me. How do I fill out the paperwork? Which, if you know my father, he and paperwork like oil and water. Like, this don't mix. So I said to him, I said, Dad, this is all I've done for my whole career. I got it. I got you. Our office has got it. Just, just <laughs> let us do it. It's fine. Um, so the other value add we do is if you sign a HIPAA authorization form, that allows myself or someone in our office to reach out to the doctor, reach out to the mm-hmm. hospital, gather that paperwork, and file a claim. Because insurance is difficult as it is, it's as you know. It can be a bear. Um, so we make the process a little bit easier by doing that legwork for the employee because the last uh, thing my dad's going to think about if he's in the hospital You don't want to do it, yeah. Yeah, how do I fill out this paperwork? I didn't know you could do that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yep. So um, I'm curious from the perspective of a business owner. Mm-hmm. Let's pretend you know, you're know you talking to me about my employees because you usually work in the group setting, right? Correct. It has to be in that setting. Mm-hmm. It can't be just anyone off the street who works for who knows what company, right? Right, correct. So as a business owner, what is the play here? I understand it's good for the employees Mm -hmm. who pays for it. Um, Just talk me through that. I need to understand that. Great question. So um, as a business owner, uh, or if you work in human resources, you virtually want the best benefits in place as a retention tool. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't pay X amount for health insurance and match their retirement plan because you're a nice person, you do it because you want to differentiate your place from the place across the street and make sure they stay after you train them. So while you're doing all those things and paying for all those things, Jesse, you give them vacation time, all those things, these benefits are free to business owners. So it doesn't cost the business owner anything. Um, It's just providing us an opportunity to present the benefits. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the products will be pre-taxed so that's lowering the taxable payroll of the company. And in Maryland, the matching FICA that they have to pay that's 7.65%, it's lowering their taxable payroll. So per tenant employees a company has, on average, we just save them about $800 a year based on participation. I didn't know you could do it pre-tax. Some of the benefits and some of the carriers still do it. Um, so it's carrier to carrier? Correct. Product to product? Correct. Which, like, give me an example of a product that does that. Um, So accident policies, anything indemnity is typically pre-taxed. If it's a lump sum benefit like disability or life or critical illness, lump sum benefits are always after tax because while you can pre-tax a disability premium, I would never advise doing that because when you really need to use it, your benefit will be taxed. So that doesn't really make sense. Um, That's the trade-off. Yeah. And nowadays, um, with everything going on in the world, we've pivoted 100% to our call center feature, which... Um, allows employees to reach out to us virtually um, during this COVID era we're all living in 
and we can do virtual face-to-face -face, uh, over the computer. Um, we can do call center where it's a recorded line and we either take inbound calls or make outbound calls. And we've done that as a core enrollment feature too. So when we partner with brokers, mm -hmm. we do that as a free service to them. So we not only talk about what we do, but we increase the participation, Jesse, on what the broker's providing, the health insurance, the disability of life. So we work in conjunction with them um, and as a value add. And our, our call center has um, been really a staple at this point in time because otherwise we wouldn't right, have anything because you're used to going and shaking hands yeah and i do miss that so i'm enjoying this <laughs> yeah yeah for sure me too oh. i think there's like two or two months where i was holed up in my uh my bedroom makeshift yeah. office yeah and it was it was neat for a while like not having to drive all over the place and saving money on gas but man if i, if I do one more zoom meeting I think, my, <laughs> I think my eyes might fall out my, my wife at this point and me both want me out of the house so i was excited to uh you know, come here and do this. I actually tried on my pants and I was like, okay, they still fit. They're good. We're good. <laughs> so from my perspective, whenever I offer someone home and car insurance, which is mostly what we do mm -hmm. as a broker, I'm not married to one company. Correct. And it's kind of like, just, just show me what you have and I'll help you. Correct. I'll, I'll do it all for you. Just give me the, the basic info and let me get in there and see what we have. Right. So as a business owner, is that kind of the same for you, just just as a broker, let me get in there and I'll show you what I can do. Correct. Yeah. So we um, will do an analysis based on what they have. So if they have Allstate, Aflac, Colonial, whatever they have, we'll do an analysis, um, see what they have in there, and then go to market. And one of the ladies in my office that make me look a lot better at my job than I actually am, yeah. they'll take uh, whatever the invoice is, say it's Allstate, and put that up against the other carriers in the market, Guardian, uh, Sun Life, Cigna, there's so many more carriers in this space now, it becomes a much more difficult path to navigate um, unless you get with someone like us or our competition to kind of go through the sequences um, to find the best fit. So um, it's a lot of legwork. Yeah, there's, I mean, carriers in there that you wouldn't think of, like Cigna, they offer worksite benefits. Um, Nationwide, they offer yeah. worksite benefits, They're accident, a big critical illness. They do a lot. Yep. Um, so it, it's, not just a one-stop shop anymore. And some of the unique things they do, like I'll give you an example, Cigna, what their proposal is, they only quote above 250 employees currently. Mm. And if you have health insurance with Cigna, and let's say you have an accident policy with Cigna, they'll allegedly cross-reference your um, claim if you're hospitalized due to an accident. When you use your health insurance, they'll cross-reference that in the system, see if you have an accident policy, and pay it in conjunction Jeez. with your health insurance. So you don't communicate. It's nice, right? So they don't have to fill out any paperwork, and that's a, a really cool niche benefit. That but that's two hundred fifty plus employees. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what is your 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 niche? Your niche market. Your um, niche for for workforce. Yeah, I would say any company that has. Uh, if you look at our portfolio, we probably go down to a three-person uh, employer all the way up to. 3,000. Um, but I say if you look at our book of business, I, I'd say our, our sweet spot is typically, I would say, 40 to 300. 40 to 300. Yeah, How I, many I of those kind of companies are, are here? Like, where are you, where are you driving yeah, to? Yeah, a lot. Um, so we're, we're fortunate and blessed in the, in the fact that I don't have to do as much driving as I did when we, you know, as you when you first get started in yeah, the business, right, yeah. you're driving all over the place. So um, before this whole um, COVID uh, thing hit, uh, I actually did a meeting in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, because we have a rep in Pennsylvania, but they weren't available. Um, so mostly I try to stay uh, as local as I can, Maryland, D.C., Delaware, Virginia. So you're licensed in different states, though. Correct. Yeah. So um, if I'm not, uh, Workforce Concepts has someone in our office that's licensed. Um, like, for instance, we have representation now in, um, we have reps in Pennsylvania, Alabama, Virginia, Delaware, um, Texas. Illinois, And this is California. the company you started. Correct. Yep. That is super cool. Yeah. Was well, that just pretty neat? That just happened. I mean, just, just not by intent, just um, kind of fell into it and started making these relationships um, with uh, people across the country through carrier uh, relationships and just talking to people and social media, really, just getting to know people. And What was the best, LinkedIn or Facebook? Um, LinkedIn was good, but there's a Facebook group that we belong to, which has um, provided a lot of resources. Um, so I guess the, the three silos that I, I may have touched on earlier, 
the marketing firm that sets appointments for us, they set it solely on worksite benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have them set those appointments in certain zip codes so we're not driving all right. over God's green earth. So if it's our person in California, they're setting appointments closest to where they live. Uh, here in Maryland, they're setting appointments closest to where um, a couple of us live here. Um, the second one is obviously through brokers or wherever they might go. But the third one, the carrier relationships we have, those are really what, uh, I wouldn't say forced us, but led us down the path to find other reps in different states because when we started doing a good job here, the other reps in other areas were looking for enrollment resources. So what we did is they would say, you know, do you have anybody in Illinois? Do you have anybody in California? And we didn't at the time. So then I just got um, to thinking, you know, maybe we should look into that. If we're getting that many requests, instead of saying, keep saying no and turning right. it down, maybe we should invest in somebody in those places to help out. So I understand, that. was that a push from the producer down in Alabama or? No, it, it was, I, I think just a, you had a prospective client in Alabama or something? Yeah, I, I think it was just, it kind of morphed into that from um, our marketing firm initially set an appointment with a group that was headquartered here, but they had um, different office, different employees in Alabama. So that, that forced us to say, hey, you know, can you have somebody in person? So rather than me or one of our people locally here fly in, it's much more cost effective to just put somebody in place down there and have them be local to that place. And, Obviously, clients like that a lot more when you do face-to-face and somebody local sure, to sure. talk to them. So. Yeah, someone local, too. Mm-hmm. So you provide the back-end support. Correct. You drum up the, the potential clients Correct. through the marketing efforts. Mm-hmm. And then you have you have producers throughout the nation. It's super cool. Yeah, it's been uh, interesting to, to watch it grow and fun. A, a lot of fun, a lot of good people along the way. And, um, you know, it's definitely a team effort. There's a reason why I didn't call this Chris Compton Jr. and Associates because I know it's not me. It's, you know, the, the global hole that, that makes this thing How work. big is the team now? My gosh, um, I think total on the um, consultant side, we have 12 total across, across the country, and administratively, we have four uh, people uh, in our office that help with claims, billing, back office support. Right. So obviously, um, you know, you, you can sell something, but if you don't have the infrastructure there to hold it up, yes. it's gonna fall. So As I always say, an insurance is easy to sell, it's hard to service. Correct. So you can sell all you want, but if you can't service, then your reputation goes out. There you go. Yeah. Yep. So absolutely. Anything else you want to um, hit on? No, I, I think we pretty much um, hit on everything. Um, you know, good companies for us: blue collar, white collar. Um, health insurance isn't discriminating against anybody. It's not. It's not getting better. It's not going down in cost, and you know, covering more. So, you know, if a company has something in place. Uh, to help cover those gaps, we're more than happy to take a look at it and see if it's the best fit. And if it is, we'll tell them. And if there's something better out there, we'll provide a spreadsheet and say, you know, what, what do you think about these options? So uh, we're not linked to one carrier. We're carrier agnostic. I've never used that term. I like it. So yeah. if someone wants to get in touch with you, I'm going to um, link your, I guess, email. Sure. And website. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd okay. be great. Well, Chris Compton, I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This has been really fun.